Now I want you to notice the scriptures. I'll go quickly. Uh, the, the, the answer, one of the, the phrases that jumps out in, in those whole 8 or 10 or 12 verses is this idea of he who has, or the person who has. And, and so what it denotes is the fact that the master in, in this context, the person being spoken to is the person who has something. Now, please understand, all of us have a gift. Amen. Yes, we do. All of us have something. All, all, of us, uh, all of us, God has given us something. And the other side of that is that God will hold us responsible for the stewardship of what he has given us. And they don't shout much when you preach like this, but you got to preach it anyway, Wilson. But because one of the things that's going to happen, I believe, that when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, if you get in heaven, thank God, because the blood is what gets you in heaven. Not by works, but by grace you have been saved through faith. Not of yourself, leaves any man can hold up his head or brag or boast. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It's all him. You get in heaven if you if you receive Christ. Amen. But the issue is, I'm getting in heaven. And God said, Wilson, you did a little bit. You preached a little bit. You did a couple of things. He goes, but look at all the stuff that you did. Because your faith wasn't strong. Or because you didn't obey me at the level that you could have. And what's going to happen, Nick, is I'm going to see everything that I could. He going to say, look at all the rewards that you could have. The lives that could have been saved. Because you do it. And, and the Bible said, Grace, so what's going to happen when I see it? I'm just going to bust out crying. My spirit going to be grieved. But then God going to say, that's okay, boy. He said, I love you anyway. And he's going to wipe away every tear from your eye. Saddest thing, the greatest tragedy is that we as Christians, as humans, will have so much unfulfilled potential. What I'm trying to preach this Sunday morning is that how to heal God say, well, God, the first thing that we need to do is to use everything that God has given us. Yeah. I like what Martin Luther King said. He said that if you are a street sweeper, he said you sweep that street so well, you sweep it like Michelangelo painted a painting. He said, you, you sweep it like Beethoven composing music. He said, you sweep it so well that the street will look so good that the angels will stop their singing and will come down to get a panoramic view, a close view of your street and look and say, look at the work that that street sweeper has done. Oh, yeah. He said, do it till you're satisfied. Do it until God can be glorified. Whatever you do. Do it till God is happy. Number one, you gotta make sure that, that, that you take advantage, you use everything that God has given you to do. You, you, you take advantage of it, that you're faithful with what he's given you. Number two, you gotta fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen. You will never finish well if your eyes are on everybody else. Yeah, right. And somebody talk to me in here. You gotta fix your, you gotta, come on somebody, everybody, you gotta have tunnel vision <laughs> on what God told you to do. Because somebody know right now, and sometimes they'll be against you. And sometimes the same ones who are for you will flip and be the same ones who are. Am I right about it? Yeah. Against you. And you can't be too swayed by people's opinion. I heard the Lord say in the word that on one day that the same people he rolled in on the donkey and they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. But I love Jesus that he was just evil. Like, okay, praise the Lord, God. Because the same folk came back next week and said, Crucify him. I preach it wrong. Part of maturity is you don't get too happy when people put your head up and try to spread your head up. You take it and try. Oh, you look so good today. You doing it. You doing it. Like you make that. Thank you. God bless you. Because next week, the same folk will come out. I don't like her. She thinks that she's sorry. So, so you got to be happy. Am I talking right? When you get a compliment, you better take it in stride. Thank you. When you get criticism, you better take that in stride. Am I right? Thank you. I'm praying on it. Amen. God bless you. But don't let that stuff have you home crying. So and so said that I, so and so, you, you can't, am I talking right? That's right. See, I needed to preach that right there because some folk, you, you go to work and, and somebody just say one little thing and you go home crying all night. You better take that stuff in stride and leave it at work. I'll take it under advisement, but ultimately, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I preach it right. Number one, you have to do, you, you, you have to make sure that you're faithful with what he has given you. 
Number two, you have to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. You have to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. That there is a there is an interesting one, one of the things that, that I need to go back and say I, I find very interesting some something I read. This writer he says that the Christian life uh, must be governed by steady development. It means that uh, he says that as God is infinite and God is all powerful and so vast. He says that you can't ever get to the point in your Christianity where you think that you know everything there is to know about God. Y'all miss that. And, and then the writer goes further. He says that every generation should seek God at a higher level. Yeah. He says that, that, that you shouldn't get to the point where you're stuck. And I, I, I thought about an example. If, if I leave my grandson a house, and I'm dead and gone, and then I come back 80 years later, there ain't nothing changed. He ain't painted, he, he done nothing, nothing to, something should change. He ought to take the house and add on to it. I don't have nobody in here. And, and I, am I talking to somebody in here? I left him a house and he fixed a little crack in the floor. I'm trying to get you to understand the Bible in here. I left it to him so he didn't have to buy it. You got it for free. Now somebody's starting to get it. I left you the thing for free. At least you could have did was, was clean it up. Am I preaching the word in here? You didn't have to work. I gave you the car. At least you could have put some gas in. You didn't have no car, no. You couldn't put no new tires on it. That's right. Now, if I let somebody borrow my car, And you, I, you, I ain't charge you nothing. I'm paying the car note. You have no car note. So on and so At least you can do something to maintain it. And you, you, you got a whole year where you ain't had a car note. You had X. I've done you a favor. And I had a little scratch in there. And you couldn't go get a little bit of that body stuff and knock that little scratch out of right. right. <laughs> Now I'm preaching the word in this thing. Yes, yes, yes. And I come back. You hear the tape? Here it is, just like I gave it to you. Why have any witnesses that hear this He said, but your responsibility is to take it. Every generation is not only to use it, and, but he said that you're supposed to take it and add something to it. I'm trying to be plain with you. This text is like a man saying that I have left three houses. I've left three people three houses. And I charge you no rent, you no rent, none of y'all pay, excuse the bad grammar, but none of y'all pay the rent. Not one of you. And then when I come back and you ain't had no mortgage, no rent, you hadn't had anything. You ain't even had, I'll take the analogy for a few further. I'm paying the lights and the water, I'm paying the utilities, and all you got to do is live there. And y'all know it's grown folk, you don't get it like that that often. No. <laughs> what the writer is saying is that, he, and I'm getting ready to tie it into to real life. He said, what the writer is saying is that you didn't have no, you didn't have a mortgage note, you had to, had to pay rent, you had to, had to pay electricity. I paid electricity. I mean, paid the water bill. You have had nothing to pay. And I come back, and he said, this man is so grateful that I live here, let him live here for a year, and he didn't have to pay anything. That he got some paint out and painted the place for him. Do I have some help in here? And he said, this man is so grateful that I let him stay a year that he went on and he did something with the floors and he got out something and he put some wax on the floors and he did some things and so forth. He said, but this man right here didn't do nothing with it. He lived there for free every day. No rent, no water, no lights, no electric, no gas, no phone, no cable. Am I preaching right? And I paid all of that and he said, the least that you could have done was fix my stuff. Fix real stuff. Yeah, so that when I come back, I'll be, am I talking right to you? Yeah. That the goal of every Christian man or woman is that you ought to leave something better. Yeah. yeah. Then you found it. That's right. That's, That's right. right. Somebody ought to say amen if I'm preaching right. Amen. That is the gist of the story. He said that you ought to make it better. Yeah. 
that way you found it. How, and I'm almost finished, how do you hear God, how do you hear well done, how do you receive well done? Number one is that you have to be faithful with what God has given you. Amen. Amen. Number two, you've got to fix your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. That you can't be destroyed, you can't be distracted by the world and the world, what people say and what people think. I told you this a few weeks ago, also last week, in fact, that you have to follow your convictions and not your condition. Because your condition can tell you everything is good when everything's really bad. All right, all right. Somebody know I'm preaching right. Because if you've been in a situation where on the surface everything looked good. Oh, this looks so right. This relationship looks so good. This looks like the best job. This looks like the best car. And I'm going to trade it in. And I'm going to rent this apartment. And this looks like the nicest place to live. But something in your spirit. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah. Tell you it's not right. If that's something come from God, you better follow the conviction in your spirit. I don't care if this person go, if that person go. I don't care if everybody moving over there. I don't care if everybody quit their job and going working over there. I don't care about this. If God has given you peace, yes. you better not go. Follow your convictions over your conditions. Sometimes, you know, that's not easy. Everybody know that? That's not easy because it, it's hard to explain to folk what God is doing in your life. Because people don't know what the Spirit's saying to you. That's why I don't think you need to spend a whole lot of time doing it. And you try to tell folk what the Lord told you and they just don't get it. Am I talking right? And they see it in the second. Girl, I would go because that job don't pay you more money. And they, but they don't feel right. I don't care how much more money it may pay me. I don't care how much it'll do this or what it'll do this. I don't have peace in my spirit. And I can't go. Am I preaching right? I can't go if I don't have peace. I can't move if I don't have peace. I'm getting ready to let you go home. But the last thing that you have to do, and I get this in the beginning, is that you have to be committed Amen. to seeing this thing through. Yes. Too many of us, we start, but we don't. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Too many of us have this bad tendency of starting things but never finishing. Yes. I'm preaching with you. I don't going to get a whole lot of advantage today. I gotta preach like God tell me. God, God says that some of us, that that's, if we're not careful, that, that mark is going to follow us through our adult lives. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking wrong. If we're not careful, that spirit will get on you. And it will follow you through your adult life. And, and so sometimes, and, and, and some of y'all know it starts when you're real young. Well, friend, another friend of mine told me his son played basketball and quit. And he let him quit. Next year, he went out and said, I'm going to go back out again, Daddy. Got out there, they let him play. He wasn't happy. He said, I'm quit. He said, no, you ain't quit. He said, if you sit on the end of that bed, you ain't quit. And she said, because I'm not, not going to let you quit, because then you're going to develop a quitting mentality. That's right. That's right. And he said, next thing you know, you're going to be 40 years old, and you don't like what they're doing on your job, and you're going to quit. That's right. I'm preaching better than somebody said, amen. That's right. He said, no, you're not quitting. He said, you're going to stay there, and you're going to stay. You made a commitment, and you're going to be there through the last. I don't care if you sit on the bench and read the paper. You're going to stay there. <laughs> well, he told him. He said, because you made a commitment. You told your parents this is what you wanted to do. We made it happen. He said, you're going to see it through because you're going to have trouble. Am I talking right? And he said, you can't get this thing in your spirit that every time things don't go your way, you quit. And somebody know the pastor preaching right into the day. Because some of y'all, we, we know people like that. We got friends and family like that. That they do real good when things are going okay. They come to church, they join the church, they get on fire for God for two, three weeks. But the moment somebody roll their eyes at them the wrong way, the moment somebody mispronounced their name, the moment their name don't get in the bulletin, they talk about I'm ready to go find me someplace else to worship. You got to say. Some people get blessed. I, I need to let you go. Some people get blessed just for stick to it. Well, I got friends like that. You know, some people, they weren't really all that in the books, but they stayed around in college seven, eight years. They stumbled on some kind of degree. If you're there seven, eight years, <laughs> some of y'all like that, y'all. They hung around. They took one class here, one class there.
And, and, and God, I, I shout to y'all in the window. 